Greetings from Baker's Green Acres. I'm Mark. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, I want to give you a briefing on what's going on. Today's the 19th of August. It's a Sunday afternoon. Uh, it's like 6.30 in the evening. I've been trying to get this pounded out all day, and there's just always one thing that's been holding me up. So I'm going to try it. Try to do this. Uh, all right, um, I got some news, and I want to uh, go through it as quickly as I can. I sent a letter to Keith Cray, who is the new director of the Department of Natural Resources, and it's dated August 1st, 2012. Here it is right here. It's on the official uh, Baker's Green Acres letterhead. Kind of a long letter, um, and we're going to post that so you can go to bakersgreenacres.com and read what we sent to him. Our request was that he rescind the order immediately, and then we went through all the reasons why it was unconstitutional and illegal and unlawful, and why he should um, do his duty. Um, haven't heard back from him. Today's the 19th. This was dated the 1st. Okay, so I'd like to read that, but I, it's kind of long. Um, the only thing that we've heard from this guy since he took over Rodney's spot as the director is uh, there was some something in a Mears article, and Mears is a it's a political commentary that comes out in Lansing, all right? So it's kind of, I think it's a bit inbred myself. Uh, I did an interview with uh, a young gal, and she didn't print very much of what I said. So I, I think it is a bit inbred. I don't think I'll be hearing from them again, at least not in this position. But uh, she says, DNR Director Keith Cray meanwhile said in an interview last month that the change of directors would not mean a change in policy as it was an administrative wide effort okay let's talk about that for a minute I know he didn't want to but why don't we Rodney was relieved from a cabinet level position and now he's in charge of green spaces whatever that is. They made up a job for him. Great. Okay? You can call it anything you want, but it's a firing. That's all there is to it. And then this guy was put in his place. Now, if Rodney was fired, and this guy was put in his place, why would he not change policy? Hmm. Goes on, the invasive species order was not a DNR issue. It wasn't. It was an administration's position. It was an administration's position. Probably means the administration's position. Probably referring to the governor's office. All right. So we were very firm that the absence of adequate regulation, then those swine are invasive species, said Cray. It's kind of a broken sentence. But he says this inadequate regulation to deal with these so-called feral swine that are running all over the place. Whoa, there they are now. Oh, those are my pigs. See, they're behind fences. That means they're not in they're not feral because they're behind my fences. Or maybe I'm on the wrong side of the fence. I don't know. Um, inadequate legis regulations. I believe that the legislature passed a law that states that feral swine can be can be shot on sight here in the great state of Michigan. We have lots of people here, like I've said, that like to shoot stuff in the woods. And I think if we had between five and 8,000 animals running around, it would be a blessing to a lot of people because they love to shoot stuff, right? Any, any time, 365 days a year, I, I guess the only restriction is not at night. I don't know why. All right, so Keith is saying that there's inadequate regulation on those animals. Hmm. I think shoot on sight is a pretty good one. And then he says, this kills me. He says, we will continue to implement it in a thoughtful and deliberative manner. <laughs> Isn't that eloquent? Thoughtful and deliberative manner. Um, I guess that's not what they've been doing up till now so maybe we'll have like a, a focus group and decide um, you know who should shoot your pigs for you whatever I don't know 
All right, that's it. Uh, we even heard anything from Keith Cray. <clears throat> Sent a letter to him. Um, government official getting back to us. <laughs> Probably not. All right, Rodney. Let's talk about Rodney. Um, relieved from a cabinet level position, as I said. Uh, thrown under the bus. It looks to us like the governor has developed a taste for his own. Um, there's a lot of uh, dissension in the ranks there at the, uh, the DNR, which brings me to my next um, point to brief is depositions. This week, Thursday and Friday, we will be engaged in round one of depositions in Lansing, Michigan. That means that we get to uh, summons folks from the DNR or the MDA or really from any place that we want into uh, a setting, usually an office, where our lawyers will be and uh, a stenographer and a guy running a videotape and a sound man. And the lawyers get to ask them some pretty pointed questions and they are under oath. That's the real bugger of it. It's being under oath, you know. So, uh, we, round one, we're going to tell you who we've deposed, uh, somewhat, anyway. Rodney Stokes, the ex-director of the DNR, and yours truly will be in the room. Uh, so I'll get to witness this firsthand, and this is this coming Thursday, all right? And the other person of interest is Dr. Nancy Frank, and she is a member of the MDA and R, MDARD, they call it. And she's a, a real expert. She's a PhD in something or other. So she's a real smart gal and she's going to tell us all about um, pigs. And what's interesting to note there, it's kind of like mathematics. Um, you can get on the stand and testify that 2 plus 2 is 5. But the law has um, absolutes as well, you know, and 2 plus 2 equals 5 would be a lie, and if you're under oath, that means perjury, that means eh. <laughs> so this is, this should be really interesting, and we're, we're looking forward to round one here. Uh, the other two guys are going to be experts from the university that helped to draft this, uh, declaratory ruling. Uh, we think that the DNR took what they said totally out of context and they will have their day in court, as it were. All right. Um, I kind of feel sorry for Rodney Stokes because he did his duty. He did what the governor wanted him to do, which was uh, continue the, uh, the pig agenda from the last administration, you know, remember them Them were the evil uh, Democrats, now we have the evil Republicans, and uh, Rodney did his job, and the governor has thrown him under the bus. Another interesting note is Keith Cray has been lateraled over from the Department of Ag. Highly unprecedented. Um, DNR, like other oppressive uh, organizations, normally hires from within. They normally do. Um, so this is unprecedented. We thought that it was because Mr. Cray would like to get this situation under control before too much more damage is done, not only to uh, the citizenry, which they are sworn to protect, but the state government as well. Nineteen days from the day that I sent him this letter, and he hasn't responded. I don't think he's too... Uh, too interested, and I think he's probably just going to carry out um, the orders that he has at hand. Okay, so that's it. We're going to des depositions. Um, that's it. Farming's going good. We're at the end of our summer now. Uh, we have had a pretty good amount of rain. Everybody else is in a drought. We've been really taken care of here. And uh, the spirits are high. Um, our trial is October 15th, 
and that's going to be in Marquette. And I'm inviting every one of you to come to that because a victory in this instance has far-reaching implications, and we would like everybody to be there for a victory. Uh, we, we're fairly confident that that's where we're going to go. And uh, always, though, um, uh, funds are always needed. Um, we go into these depositions, and you know, I got to pay two lawyers and a lobbyist, and uh, a lot of hotel rooms and stuff like that. And we're we're back short of cash again. So I'm going to call on some of you guys out there. I know that have deep pockets and are patriots. Uh, we need the dollars. We need the dollars to make this happen. And uh, please make that happen soon. You know what's sad about this is the state confiscates money from me to prosecute or to persecute me and uh, and I have to raise money from you all to do this but the the funds that you've given me uh, up till now have been well used and we have made a lot of we've gotten a lot of mileage out of that, those funds um, we have the state kind of backed against the wall on this issue and I can tell you something for you guys that are from out of state if we can get this knocked out here, you're not going to have to deal with it in your state. And this is pigs right now that we're dealing with, but a feral pig, feral horse, feral dog, feral cow, um, it could all be next. Feral chicken, it could all be next. And we believe that that is what the agenda is, is to use the state to press uh, citizens into getting animals off the pasture like these guys here and onto concrete in concentrated animal feeding operations. We don't like that, and uh, we're not going to take that. Uh, we're, we're Americans. We are free, and we will pr pursue farming in the manner that we see fit, not the way that uh, someone else sees fit for us. And that, that's the end of the story right there. Um, I have said that these, some of these people need to step down from their positions. They're getting paid good money some of them in excess of 150,000 a year to do this to us 150,000 a year you know what that is you know how much that represents per month uh, I reckon most people that are listening to this don't make that kind of money I certainly don't and that money comes out of our taxes they take it and then they give it to these people to do this and that's gotta end um, a lot of these people that have put forth this illegal and unconstitutional um, policies or rhetoric that they've put, um, they need to be called on the carpet, and uh, we need to take those jobs back from them and give it to people who will do the jobs that they're getting paid for. And that's to, to propagate agriculture, propagate business, and, and bring prosperity back to the state of Michigan, not the other way around. Don't make us poor. You know, if you want to do that to us, all the while you're making 150, 180 grand a year, we don't like that, and we're not going to put up with that. That's a promise. Remember, anyone can farm. I wish you would.